I turned him into a monster and I hope I can change him back to the man he once was. This is going to be a bit long, but this is acting as a way for me to vent and ask for other waywards for advice in fixing my marriage. It's been going on seven months since my husband discovered my affair. The both of us are 39 and my husband before discovery was sweet. He's not a perfect man, he has his quirks, but I was his world. Our family was his world. He worked long hours to make sure I stayed home and raise our son and daughter. He would always do these sweet things just to brighten my day and it did. My husband was the opposite. In high school, he was rude, charming, and obnoxious, used to get into a lot of fights, and had a lot of girlfriends, and yet for some reason, the summer before senior year, he wanted to talk to me. I was the nerdy girl into video games, comic books, and cosplay. He was always nice to me ever since he moved into our town in 8th grade. He was different, his family was different and everyone wanted to hang out with him. I was invited to my first party because of him. He taught me how to dance salsa and then he fell with the popular crowd and I thought that was it. But that summer he walked into the comic shop I was working in and just hung out all day talking to me and even walked me home. One day became many and we were dating by summer's end. I had the greatest senior year of my life. I was part of the popular crowd, and I went to so many parties, but my favorite moment was when it was just the two of us. Of course, I never slacked off. I studied hard and I made him study with me. We both got into the same college and we were married shortly after graduation. Our son came a year and a half later and our daughter 20 months after that. My husband worked hard for us during all this. He had trouble finding a job because he had no experience, so he worked odd jobs in construction, grave digging, janitorial, and as a receptionist, until he found a company that would give him a chance as a computer tech. My husband put on a lot of weight during that time, but it never decreased his intimacy. As for me, I kept my figure and maintained it and soon we looked like a cartoony couple. A fat, yet a muscular man with a slender, cut wife. We even dressed as Barney and Betty Rubble one Halloween that emphasized that cliché. It's not like he didn't work out, he just had a hard time losing the body fat, but his intimacy appetite was always high. For me, it was decreasing. It's not like I didn't want to do the dirty it's just that I wasn't in the mood and as the years passed I wasn't in the mood for intimate favors as well. I was always tired. The kids really drained me, cooking and cleaning really drained me. Yes, he did help with the laundry, cooking and cleaning. Made sure Saturday was takeout day and Sunday was daddy cook day but I was still tired and not in the mood. I used to love it when he took it from me, but I still gave him more no's than yes. It would affect his mood the longer we didn't have it. He'll snap and complain, and when we did do the dirty, he would turn it into a marathon and I would hate it because I would be sore for the next week and he would still want more. He would ask me to cosplay for him and I didn't want to do it. However, he had no issues wearing the costumes I made him for comic and video game conventions, knowing that he really hated it. Our lack of intimacy was a big issue for him. We even went to couple counseling and our counselor said my husband was a borderline addict, but only wanted to have intimacy with me. I then had myself checked out and from my examination, it turned out that I had low estrogen and was even given several medications for it, but it still didn't work. My doctor soon told me that I was suffering from female impotence, something that I thought was made up. The affair wasn't planned. It wasn't romantic or something grandiose, it wasn't something that happened. I was out with my friends. We're all married, we all go to the same church, and we were just bowling and having fun. It was the first time since the lockdowns we got together and we just had a blast. At the end of the game, all the ladies left, and instead of going home, I went to the lounge so I can wait out the buzz I had and that was where I met my affair partner. He was young, in his early 20s and he noticed I was reading a manga on my phone and we began talking. I wished I could blame it on the alcohol, but I was only buzzed. I wish I could blame it on being lonely, but my husband always wanted me and gave me plenty of attention. I wish I could say I had an unhappy marriage, but we were very happy. In all honesty, I still don't know why I did it. I mean I know how it happened, we talked for a few hours, he flirted and I flirted back, he walked me to my car and he kissed me. Instead of pushing him away, I kissed him back and we did the dirty in the motel next door but I don't know why I did it. It didn't last that long. We just went at it and was very unsatisfying. About halfway through I realized what I was doing and I shoved him off of me, apologized, got dressed, and left. When I came home, 
My husband was asleep with a kid on the sofa and I went into the shower and cried about what I did. I told myself it was a mistake and it would never happen again. When I came out of the shower, I let my husband and kids sleep on the sofa, went to bed, curled up into a ball and cried myself to sleep. The next day, I wanted to tell him the truth, but I was too scared. So I pretended it never happened. For five weeks I pretended it never happened and I soon realized I was late. I took a pregnancy test and it showed positive and I couldn't understand how. My husband and I did do the dirty twice, but he had a vasectomy and I made sure the night of the affair that man wore a rubber and even so he never finished. I went to the doctor and it turned out I was pregnant. Which created a very awkward conversation we came to the conclusion that the man must have removed the rubber and the doctor was telling me how it could have been the pre-kids that did it. I was scared, and I schedule an abortion. I couldn't keep this child. I couldn't do that to him. I was planning to keep this a secret. I got home, cried, and steadied myself for when the kids got home, but my husband came home early. I forced out a smile when he came home, but he was looking at me with rage. Our health equity emailed him with a new claim on the insurance. He asked who was the father and I started crying. He repeated himself and asked how long was the affair. I was truthful, I told him that it was a one-time thing and I pushed him off me, but he didn't believe me. So he repeated himself, but this time he yelled and it felt like it went through my body. I told him it was the truth and got extremely upset. This was the first time he have ever done this to me, but his eyes were bloodshot, and he was fighting back the tears. He wanted to know the details. What we did, what he looked like, where we met, and then called me a farming tool in Spanish before walking out of the house. You know, it's always funny with women where if, a, if they found a good man, right, they always find reasons to destroy them. Here's a man that was the antithesis, the opposite of her when, when they were young, right? One's the popular guy, she was the outcast, yet he looked past, you know, maybe her looks, but definitely her social standing and wanted to be with her. Uh, he made effort to be with her, to be someone that is worthy of her, you know, studying, all, everything, right? And she appreciated that. And, you know, they fell in love, they got married, which is great. But he showed that he was, he would, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, break, break social boundaries to be with her. And now, as as they got older you know what he's focusing on life you know trying to trying to like um give her a life right because i think she said uh, she's a stay-at-home mom while he's working hard but he can't focus on his looks she found him less attractive you know less she's less interested in, in having sex with him which is disgusting because she would have sex with him she just doesn't she wants she's just not into it and then giving excuse because she's tired with the kids <laughs> women you still cheat so you're not see this is why i say like a lot of a lot of women especially give excuses that oh they're always tired you know they the kids this work that um chores that yet those are the reasons why they can't have sex with their significant other husband or boyfriend yet those aren't reasons enough for them to not cheat which in turn have sex with someone else it kind of says a lot so it kind of gives very little credence to those excuses because in turn there's just excuses now then and doctors and therapists the sometimes i feel therapists are more useless than they're actually useful because saying that, putting, putting the blame on him being borderline uh, sex addict. No, men want, men, why does it, why does it seem like it's a, a condition when men crave attention? They crave love and affection from their partner, from someone they married. And what is the problem with craving a lot of it? So if it was the woman, right, wanting attention, wanting, you know, wanting to feel loved, she, he wouldn't call her an addicted, uh, have a sex addiction. No. And then doctors saying she has 
a female impotence. <laughs> she wasn't impotent enough not to cheat on him. So it, it is sometimes it's weird with the people around you who are foolish and not seeing how women behaviors are. I was, yeah, I could tell you that she was unattracted to him. She didn't feel the love for him anymore, right? She, she didn't, he didn't do it. He didn't, see, this is why I said women, they thrive on drama. They are controlled by their emotions. She didn't feel the vibe. She didn't feel no chemistry anymore from him. She didn't, you know, women always say energy and all that crap, but she didn't feel it anymore. She didn't feel the spark, the, I guess the, yeah, the spark uh, and the chemistry of, you know, when you first uh, meet a man or when you, you know, when you're first, in the first year of a relationship. And that's what she, that's what women always uh, crave. And, you know, they, they always need which always in turn ruins relationships because now they, they're ruled by it. And you know what? She exemplifies women behavior, women nature, right? She said it, you know, happy marriage, you know, good, all this stuff, right? Women crave attention, but they crave attention from other men, from, they, they would crave a lot of attention, right? And they crave to be wanted and needed, but not just by one man. This is why women, they have attention addiction, right? Uh, they love to feel wanted by, by other people. They love it. And I believe that she also found this other, you know, stranger more attractive. So that, that also helps an attractive man giving her attention. You know, that's the thing. And also, like I just said, that women cre crave drama. They crave the dopamine effect from highs and lows of emotion. So one of the highs is like, you know, getting to know someone new, right? Also the dangers of uh, cheating or, um, you know, the, the, the sparks of, um, you know, you know, hooking up with uh, a new person, you know, someone you just met, you're, you're getting to know, you know, the, the whole honeymoon phase right there, right there. Also, maybe the lows of, um, it's maybe a little bit um, dicey, but like the lows of uh, drama that I mean, she, she may get caught, she may get caught, or, you know, the chance of divorce, shit like that, that, that could be it too. I turned him into a monster and I hope I can change him back to the man he once was. Part 2 I cried and had my sister pick up my kids because I needed to be alone when he got home. He didn't come home until after midnight. I met him by the door and gasped because he had a black eye, his shirt had bodily fluid stains and his fists were bruised. I asked if he was okay, but he shoved me and told me that the stains weren't his before entering the bathroom and slamming the door closed. I sat by the stairs, waiting for him to come out and when he did, he sneered at me and went to the living room. Again I tried to talk to him, but I wanted to know who he fought with, but he ignored me at first, eventually he looked at me and said who do you think I had a fight with? I turned white and he resumed watching TV. I went to the bowling alley the following day and asked around. Somehow my husband found out who the guy was and they fought. Fights in the alley are almost a daily thing in our town. It's to the point unless someone is seriously injured the sheriff won't bother showing up. For the next week, he kicked me out of our room and had me sleep on the sofa. I tried twice to sneak back onto the bed, the first time he yelled at me to get out and the second time he shoved me off the bed. I just looked at him when I got off the floor and no words were said, but I went back to the sofa and cried. On the day of my abortion appointment, he told me that I'd better get it done and I nodded. I was scared to do it alone and he looked at me with such hate when I asked him to come with me and then told me to go F myself. When I got back from the procedure, there were pods outside the garage and my husband and his friends were unloading the garage into them. I asked what was going on and he told me that it was none of my business. His friends looked at him in shock and I went inside. A few hours later there was a lot of hammering and I went to go look at what was going on, and he was turning the garage into an apartment. I tried to apologize and talk to him, but he ignored me. Then one day, I blew up apologizing for everything and that just angered him. He then told me that he was not going to waste any energy on me. He told me that if he had it his way, he would divorce me, 
but according to the many lawyers he spoke to, after alimony and child support, he can't afford to live on his own. So he was stuck with me. The first month was awkward because it's hard to explain to the kids what was happening. I tried to invite him over to eat, but he ignored me. He would come home, check on the kids, ignore me and go into his garage apartment. The second month I begged him to go to counseling and he went. But remained quiet only to yell at me about cheating on him, and I had no excuse. Then came the gut punch. I learned he had been messing around with a lot of women. I thought he was lying just to hurt me, but the expression on his face said otherwise. The counselor asked him how many and he said he doesn't keep count, but said he has been going around with random women almost every other day for the past three weeks. He needed to feel like a man and feel wanted. He has been using websites and apps and when the counselor told him that two wrongs don't make a right, he fired back by telling her that it wasn't two wrongs. I was the one who cheated, broke our vows, lied, got pregnant, and tried to hide it. He's just trying to adapt to his new situation where we pretend to be the happy couple when we're outside, but are just roommates when we get home. It hurt me, but to me I saw this as a way to still win him back. The following month he began to talk to various women in front of me and this time I had enough, and I told him that I wanted a divorce and he laughed at me. Told me to go right ahead, but he would make sure everyone knows what happened, he will scream it from the hills, post it on our family's Facebook page and place it in our annual holiday newsletter to all of our friends and family. That quickly shut me up and he told me to leave, but I didn't want to. We argued and argued, it felt good to get some sort of emotion from him and somehow we ended up doing the dirty that lasted for hours. When we were done I was happy, I thought we were healing, but he told me to get out, that my usefulness outstayed my welcome. I couldn't believe he said that to me, but I left. For the past few months now it's been that way. Every once in a while we will be intimate and he will kick me out as soon as he is finished. He will still, go out and I know he's still doing it with different women. However, we have been talking more. Especially during counseling, but we're not healing. During one of our sessions, he told the counselor that something is broken in him. When he looks at me, he feels like he wasted years of his life and is now going through the motion. I asked him if there way we can start over and he told me that as soon as the kids are old enough for him not to pay child support, he'll be divorcing me and walked out. If he's so dead set on divorcing me, then why still go to counseling every week? I'm convinced that he's just saying these things just to hurt me. The other day was our anniversary and our family threw us a party, he played the part of a happy husband and I hated myself for what I did to him. Missed the way our marriage used to be. The way he held my hand, and kissed my cheek during the party. Even the sappy speech he made, I wanted to believe it. When we got home, he put the kids to bed and I tried to initiate intimacy, and we did, but as soon as it was over, he got up and left. I begged him to stay, but he just ignored me and I cried myself to sleep. I need help. I want my husband back. I want our life back. Is there any wayward who has been through this or something similar who can give me advice on fixing this marriage? Please help me. She definitely turned him into a monster. Like, she destroyed him. Utterly destroyed him. But you can see why. If you hear the story, even the things she said from her perspective, he's, he went above and beyond. Right? He loved her when he was young. And he looked past everything to be with her. Because... You, you know, stereotypically, you know, they're from different worlds, you know, but he didn't care, right? And he done things to try to make her the happy. He, he, he hurt, he worked himself to death, you know, worked himself to the bone to provide for her, uh, show her that he loves her and wants her, you know, you know, he only wanted her. And it shows you that now she misses the, how it was before. This is where women don't know the consequences of their actions, right? She misses the things he's done for her. Well, he was doing that before he, she cheated, but she didn't care, right? She didn't care any of that stuff. And it's just sickening that women never think things through. They live on their emotions. They're controlled by their emotions where you can't see where you destroyed a man completely. This is where people was like, well, I've, I saw this one where a woman said, oh, dating men that are broken is so hard. Why can't they get over it? Why? Because how could you trust someone? Because this is a woman that supposedly was, you know, clean cut or 
not some, you know, hole in the street, shit like that, you know? But even her, even this type of woman will flip and still cheat on you. So how is there any trust in someone else when you don't even know if they they had morals to begin with? She supposedly had morals, you know? The geeks usually, you know, geeky people don't usually just, I don't know, cheat on others because they, they, they see the value of, of, you know, commitment in general, I believe, right? That's my own belief. Um, but then it's sad that that's what she, even that kind of person, right? When you perceive them to be at least more morals than, you know, the popular girl, shit like that, and still cheated on him. She never understood that, you know what? It was a, that the cheating thing was the last straw because she did not give him any love for a long time. She did not give him any appreciation for a long time. So he felt like, wow, you just, you were slowly destroying me this whole time. And now you just pretty much just take a shotgun to my head. So you, I, I could see, I, I just think that he should have divorced her and, you know, get the band-aid off, you know, suffer through the, the alimony and all that stuff. And because he's suffering in it, right? He's suffering seeing her. So it's hard.